You know, I thank the Lord for today. It's a beautiful weather today. Yes, you, know, I'm, you know, I'm just encouraged to be here and just to spread the good news about Jesus and what well, he died for us on the cross and for our sins. And, you know, we don't have to carry all these burdens and heaviness with us and know that, you know, God is for you and he loves you. Praise the Lord. We're just going to lift up the name of Jesus and, and just, you know, worship him and, and just... Just let them know that he's still alive in this place, in this land. Praise God. And the people are still serving the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Let's sing. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. I'm going to lift up the name. Yeah. 
pray. Let's go to the Father in prayer. Praise the Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you right now, Lord God. Father, we just dedicate this time unto you, Lord, right yes, now, Lord in the name of Jesus. Father God, we just ask, Lord God, you, you know, we know that your spirit is here, Lord God. Yes, Father, yes. that your spirit gives us the liberty, Lord God, yes, today Lord. to worship you with our whole mind, our whole, yes. our whole, whole heart, and our whole soul, our every being, Lord God. Father, because we were created to worship you, Lord God. We're created in your image, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Father God, that, that your hope and your spirit will go Jesus. forth through every home in this village, Lord God. And you remind them that you created them, Lord God, in your likeness, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Father God, we just thank you today for this home, Lord God. We thank you for the invite, like, Lord God, that they, they want Jesus here, Lord God. Father, that they want you in the midst, Lord God. They need to know and know for sure that you are amongst them, Lord God. Father, we thank you for your power to transform lives. We thank you for your power to heal the sick. We thank you for your power to provide, Lord God, all that we need, Lord Jesus. Father, we just thank you for being you who you created us to be, Lord God. Father, we just... Thank you today. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And we said, Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's Amen. give him glory to, today. Glory to his name. Down at the cross.
praise God. You know, I have this song in my heart on my way here, praise the Lord. I just thank him for his love and his his power that he has over our lives, praise God. We ought to worship him because of what he's given, praise God. What he freely given, praise God. It didn't cost us nothing, maybe for all us to to put down our life and take up his, praise God, and mm -hmm. live for him, praise the Lord. I want to sing this song, More Love, More Power. More love, more power, more of you.
finished the order of service for song, testimony, praise report. I know you have a testimony to say something great about our Lord yes. Jesus. I know he is doing a work in your life, praise God. I thank him today for what he is doing. I thank him for giving me the strength to go on to endure in this race, praise God. For giving us opportunities, praise the Lord. You know, it's if it's only by God. And his, in, in his dwelling spirit for us as children of God to go forward in him, praise the Lord. Amen. I thank him for a purpose. I thank him that he given each and every one of us a purpose in life. Amen. And I pray that you find your purpose in life. Praise the Lord. We're going to change the order of service. God bless you. Run on up. So I was saying earlier that uh, Francine had invited us to come and, uh, come and uh, do a house dedication. She wants to dedicate her house. Amen today to the Lord and uh, sharing with her earlier that uh, you know when we do that it's a, it's a, we're giving God our house we're saying God this is this is this is where we want you and not only that but it's a reflection on her heart on her heart that's what she wants she wants the Lord in her life and she is the house the Lord lives in us so we are so so that is a symbolic gesture and a statement that she is making in our village, in the village here at Amen. Upper Santan, Amen. that this belongs to God. Amen. And uh, we're making our way out this way, Francine. We're starting from District 7, and we're doing a, a prayer for the community. Amen. And uh, I think we found our spot here. We're going to gather in a couple of weeks or so. Is that okay? <laughs> we got a good yard right there, so... So, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go to seven and uh, Lone Butte and Hila Butte and all those areas and uh, we're gonna hit all the areas and just to bring awareness, bring awareness to our people that God is still here. Amen. And just because we're going through what we're going through, God wants you to humble yourself to Him yes. and surrender. So we're going to do that after a while. We're going to go through a couple of testimonies. And i got a little uh, word to share with you, yeah. to leave with you. And then we'll do the dedication after that to, of the yeah. house. Okay? Yeah. Somebody run up real quick. We're running out of time. Praise God. Yeah. Let's thank God for everything. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lambert Allen the third. I'm, I'm originally from District 6, but I've been living in Sacktown for about almost going on 14 years. But, you know, just so much that was going on in West End, you know, I just had to get away from that place to, I guess you would say, to, to have a new beginning in life, to have a new start, and knowing that, that what God can do in your life, you know, these things I didn't know back then, but I know that I come to a place where I needed Jesus in my life, where I needed him the most, where, where he could save me, to yeah. save my, my, my spirit, my soul, to save me from destruction, the stuff that I was getting into, drugs, alcohol, smoking weed, dwelling on the past, you know, carrying the hurts in my heart that I don't no longer need no more, because the day I gave my life to the Lord, I just felt a difference taking place in my life that they, everything was gone. I, I noticed something about me that was different. And it was the Spirit of God that came down and touched my life and to allow me to, to have joy, to have peace, to have strength. But the word long suffering, it took me a while to, to receive because I wanted to be okay. But I didn't know that long suffering could build you up in the, in the time of your trials. And that whatever you may go through in life, that you can always turn to God's word. Amen. You can turn to prayer and to begin to learn how to worship the Lord. You know, and that's where I learned all this when I went through my, my hardships at times. But ever since then, the Lord has been good to me ever since. You know, back in 2007, I left the reservation, went to Casa Grande, went to a place called Big Yards Men's Recovery Home. But during that time, I was there, and I, I took that time of recovery to, to get off of the drugs. And, man, it was a, a life-changing process for me. But it, it was all good. Yeah. All is well. Oh, thank you, man. But the first scripture that I opened up to, this is my testimonial scripture. And I hold this dearly to my heart. And it's, it's written in Isaiah 42, 16. 
And the word of God says, I will bring the blind by a way they did not know. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and cook the places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. Hallelujah. Amen. The first time I hold on to that, I wrote that scripture. I just kept reading it over and over and over. Just barely, open, my eyes begin to open up to the word of God where it's allow me to know that when you get into God's word, it, it enlightens you. It enlightens your soul. It enlightens your mind, your thoughts of understanding, getting to know who Jesus Christ is. Because it's written out in the word of God. It tells you who, who Jesus Christ is and what he did for you on the cross. Take away the transgressions, iniquities. He, he promises a future that, that, that he has for you. But it's up to you if you want to go forth and receive that gift of salvation, that gift of life, you know, of all the goodness that God has before you. It's up to you to pursue life. But I can, I'm going to tell you this, but there's one that's out to lie, kill, steal, and destroy. And that's the enemy. It's called Satan, the devil. And him and his, and his, his, um, his, his demons that run to and fro, destroying a lot of lives, hurting a lot of people, tearing a lot of people down. Because not about... Cause I didn't know any of this thing. Cause I know what I see when I was when I was in drugs and bondage. I know what I, the how, how lifeless I felt, how hopeless I felt, and having all that hurt. But when I begin to receive the Word of God, the bread of life, where it says in the book of John that Jesus says, "I am the the way, the truth, and the life. That no one can come to the Father except through me." That right there just stuck with me ever since. And I've written, written it in the tablet of my heart to remember these things. Amen. I, you know what? God has done so much for me. He's blessed my life, my, my, my marriage, my family. You know, he's, so far he's kept me sober. He's kept me clean. He's taken away those desires I used to pursue. Pursuing that, 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 the, 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 the best drug that is out there, that best weed. I was one of those guys I wanted the best. But now I've come to that place in my life where I need Jesus Christ in my life. Man. Where I need him in my life. Man. more Hallelujah. Man. To change those old desires to have new desires. Hallelujah. Man. And that's what I'm grateful for. Just glad to be here to, to encourage each one of you, the family, and to let you know that God is a good God. God Man. bless you. It's good to be here Amen. in uh, Upper Santan. It's good to come together and encourage and uh, and uh, just have a good time with uh, Francine and family and neighbors. It's me, Tweety, back home, and it feels good to be home. I always testify about that. I just live on. I used to just live on the other side, and we were never uh, allowed to just come across. And, uh, but I praise God because we have a Savior. We have Jesus. If you're going through some things today, I want to tell you God is still alive. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. In this world, we have to wear masks. And I get blessed when I look at all those kids. Because uh, children are a blessing from God. Amen. And they may have get on our nerves and they'll say, Hey, him good church of it. Go on, go play. But you know what? Kids are a blessing to us. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I sing a couple of songs and I we brought our mom today and I'm glad she's here.
precious Jesus, you're so wonderful. You're the air that I breathe. You're the wind beneath my wings. You're so wonderful, precious Father. surrender to God to say, here I am. I'm tired of messing around. Man. We have messed up our life all this time. We wanted it our way. We wanted to do what we wanted to do. We made a lot of things. And we, we, we fail. But you know what? God comes and helps us through Jesus. Helps us fix our heart with him. Amen. And the way we do that is to is just to say, Jesus, here I am. Amen. I just want to worship the Lord. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. I know that people are listening out here. Remind them that, God, you're alive. You're still able to heal, to restore a brokenness. Maybe they, they walked in their place for a long time, but as we look at the sunset, some of our lives, that's how much we have left. Today, we want to surrender and just worship you, Lord. We love God.
Mother dear, come on.
And I'm glad to be here and I'm glad to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus is so wonderful. He, uh, he, re he uh, rearranged my life. Amen. He, uh, I used to be a drunk. Uh, I used to be an addict. Amen. I was lost in the world. Used to run through these uh, roads here, drunk and high. Amen. Used to do uh, crazy wild things. And, you know, but uh, when Jesus came into my life, it changed everything. You know, the word says that when, uh, when, we, be, when we have Jesus in it, we become a new creation or a new creature. Amen. Amen. And we become new. And we're not the same as we were before. We look the same, but our whole character changes, amen. Our look out on life is different. The life here is, is the, the Word of God says it's but a vapor. It's going to be gone amen. before you know it. And, and these graves that you can see, the grave can attest to it. Because a lot of people have uh, been born and a lot of people passed away. And a lot of people believe that they're going to last forever. They're, going to, they're not going to die. But the word says that it is pointed for man to die once and then the judgment. Amen. And that judgment is real. That you're going to be judged on whether or not what did you do when, what did you think or what did you feel when you heard about the name of Jesus. Because Jesus is a savior. He was a man, but he was God, a man in the flesh. He was born of a virgin, amen. amen. He was born to come and save your life, your soul, amen. He came to save you. He died for you. The word says that God commanded his love. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. God commanded his love that while we were yet sinners, Amen. Christ died Amen. for us. Amen. Amen. He paid a price that you and I could never repay. Amen. Because there was a death sentence when everyone is born. We're born with a sentence of death from Adam. Amen. When Adam was born, when he sinned in the garden, that was passed on to each and every one of us. That's why we die today. Because if that didn't happen, we would still be in the garden. We would still be alive, eating from the tree of, 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 tree, uh, tree of life. We would be still alive, amen? Yeah. But that didn't happen because God had a purpose and a plan for everything to happen, amen? Yeah. It doesn't just happen, but God's plan is that for everyone to be saved. Yeah. And the only way they're going to get saved is by hearing the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the only way. The Word says that He is the way, the truth, and the light. He says, no one can come to the Father except by Him. Amen. And the Word says, let not your hearts be troubled. Amen. Amen. Because we have a Savior. Amen. We make the trouble, troubles in this world, we make the tribulations, but we don't go through it alone. When we were in the world, we used to go through trials and troubles. We used to go through it on our own and try to fix it and try to make it right. But every time it will fail, something else will come up. That's right. Amen. Today with Jesus, he's there with you. The word says that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Amen. He says that he'll hold you in the palm of his hand that nobody can snatch you. Amen. When you receive Jesus. The word says that when you believe, it doesn't say, amen, when you accept him. It says when you believe, amen. then you will have eternal life. So how do we get to believing? By listening to the Word of God. By listening to the Bible. Reading the Bible and understanding who God is. And what He has for you in this life. So that you can spend your eternity life with Him. Amen. Amen. So what we're doing here is we're congregating. We're worshiping. We're lifting up the name of Jesus. Because that's what we're going to do in heaven. Or it's the second heaven when it comes back down. Amen. And that's what we're here. We're trying to share Jesus with you to let you know that he is alive. Amen. He's yeah. not in the tomb no more. Amen. He was crucified for you and me. Amen. He was crucified, but he lives. And today we live a different life. Like I said, my life has been changed. Amen. 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 We don't do the things we used to do. Amen. We live a new life. We go to church. Amen. But now with this virus is here, everybody's in panic. Amen. But if you have Jesus, Jesus says that he brings the peace. He brings the peace within your life, like not like the world, but a peace that Jesus, only Jesus can give. So in this time of this virus is here, we shouldn't be afraid because we know where we're going to go. Amen. Amen. And this is the time when we share Jesus because there are people that are out here that are hungry. 
people that are scared, frightened, don't know what's going to happen. But well, we're here to let you know that Jesus can take away that fear. Amen. He can put a new spirit within you. Amen. Amen. He can revive you. Amen. He can give you a life that you thought you could never live. Because yes. I didn't think I was going to be here talking about Jesus. I, I, I despised him. I, I, I didn't want nothing to do with him. Right. Amen. But there was a time when I had to fall on my knees right. and ask Jesus into my heart. Amen. Amen. And, and I got saved. And and yeah, I'm sure I backslid, but that's given. Because the word says when sin abounded, but says that grace abounded more. Amen. So that you can have forgiveness more than the, more than what the sins you can. It doesn't give you a license to go and sin and do what you want to do. Amen. It just says that when you fall into sin, that forgiveness is there, grace is there. Amen. And that's why that's why we can uh, pray, amen, for forgiveness. So that we be cleansed and meet right with God. Because that's what happens when you accept Jesus. You accept Jesus' blood and it covers you. Then you're made right before the Father. But only through Jesus' righteousness, which is his blood, you're made right with the Father. They call it an atonement. But it's a reconciliation. You're just made right with him. You're ready. You can commune with him. You can talk with him. Amen. He's our Heavenly Father. He's our Daddy. And that's how we're to talk to him. They tell him about our needs, our wants, our hurts, so that he can take care of them. Amen. Yeah. So I'm glad to be here, and I hope you enjoy the service. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. 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 I'm going to read this uh, scripture here. Uh, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to take too long. And uh, this is a scripture from, there's a scripture that I've been kind of using lately. And uh, I want to, I want to share, I want to encourage you with it. It's found in the book of Jeremiah, in the Old Testament of Jer uh, the book of Jeremiah, uh, in the 29th chapter of Jeremiah, verse 11, 12, and 13. And it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Verse 12, then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Verse 13, and ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Amen. Okay, now. Yeah. But to I then you let this uh, song be our prayer. But the way God are they given it the hood nick. But it's just a simple little song, and you don't have to learn know how to sing. But I love to do that. I love singing this song because it speaks of uh, my heart towards God. Yeah. That I will, I will, I will. Allow God, I want God, I want Him to speak to me. And because I want Him to speak to me, I'm going to humble myself to Him. I'm not going to harden my heart. I'm not going to be stubborn. But I'm going to open up my heart to Him that He will speak to me. And give me understanding. So, if you don't know how to sing, it's okay. Just tap your foot. You can clap your hands. Let this be our prayer. Okay? Number five. Yeah.
What's up, bro? Or you can say, uh huh? <laughs> oh, Lord, uh huh? There's, there's people that say that. Amen. No, it's an apple. It's an apple. That's not right. <laughs> oh, Lord. What's on my heart uh, this evening for this house? And not only he, uh, just he, uh, but a girl, Francine Kier, but all over was it Jajim? When you knocked it, we read the scripture about the people that God took care of. And they were in bondage. They were in another country. Adam, the Jewish people, they were in another country for 70 years. But God's promise, God will send prophets and God will send messengers to them. Just like he's doing today, Eden. Sending messengers. Or we might say male men and women. Amen. Amen. And sending a word that will encourage a word that will remind a people that as hard as things are and as hard as it may be, see, because we don't know. We don't really know the struggle with each other, but we know there is a struggle. Amen. In our land. And I can even begin to realize or to understand how what people must be going through today. But today we are afforded. We are gifted. We are called. We are called. To stand. We are called to sacrifice. We are called to take a message in times like this. That as hard as it was for the people back then, the promise of God was with them. That after 70 years of bondage in Babylon, the Israelites, 70 years of bondage in, in, in Babylon, God was still faithful to them. And he was going to bring them back home to where they belong. And it's the same thing with us today. We are nobody. The non-natives had put that seem like upon our, our, our people that we are nobody. But yet that's not the truth, that's not reality in the eyes of God. God loves you. God has a plan. God has a purpose. God has a purpose for you. That's why you are still here. Amen. That's why you have made it through the dark times. You have made it through all the struggles that you've come through. I don't know about you, but I've made a lot of dumb choices. i made a lot of bad decisions in my life. But we're still here. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And I just want to remind you today, Josh, and it says in the scripture that we are to realize and understand the mind of God, the will of God. How do you say it in autumn? Huh? Joshua 
Jos le masma betnyet. But people, but 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 Atim Adama, we're not junk. We're not a waste. Man. We're not. We're not a. We're not a nobody to God. But you are. You are somebody. God loves you, and that He would send a message, a word, to you, Man. to let you know that you can put your confidence in that. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what it's like being in your house. There's a lot of shut-ins today. A lot of people stay home. Can't go anywhere. Elders can't go anywhere. I don't know what it's like to sit and to just sit there and, and not go nowhere. And I don't know, you know, after a while, when, when, when I am just, uh, my, my mind starts to wander. My mind starts to take off. My mind starts to think about things that I shouldn't be thinking about. But but the word said says to us tonight that you are to be, put your confidence on the, the word of God that says, God says to you, my thoughts I know are good towards you. My thoughts about you is good. And it's about peace. He wants to bring peace into your life. Now hear me. It's not the kind of peace that we think. But it's the peace between you and your maker. A peace between you and the one that wants you. The one that wants to bring you to himself. The one that wants to reunite with you. That there will be nothing between you and him. He, he wants you to be at peace with him. Amen. Because the just the human beings that we have a thing against God. When something bad happens, this the first one we blame. Oh, it's God's fault. It's His fault. Why doesn't He listen to me? That's time we go in car. And our hearts begin to get hard towards God. But if we would just know what He said, that His thoughts is good. That he wants to bring peace between you and him. And he does that tonight. He does that. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to pray. To believe. To put your confidence in him. That's why we're here tonight. Because we're believing God is going to put a stop to this thing. Amen. Yeah. We're believing God is going to go be before us. And stop this, uh, this sickness. I don't remember ever a time, maybe you do, some of you, but I don't remember ever a time where, where, uh, where, uh, where, where death came so heavy and so much on our land. But we are there, dadat, dadat, we've arrived at that place. Yeah. That is coming closer to our homes. Coming closer to our homes. To the ones that we love, the ones that we know, the ones that we just spoke to. It's coming real close. And this is our time. And we're believing God. And I know people want healing. I know we want healing. But my question is, after you get healed, then what? Are we going to go back to living the same way? If God heals, when God heals you, when He heals you, when He touches you. I want you to know that God, when He heals you, He doesn't just want to heal your physical body. He wants to heal that thing that is between you and God. Man. He wants to heal that, 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 that separation, that division between you and God. He wants that to be healed. And we're believing, Wayland is just believing that God will put a stop to this disease so that it will give us a chance, give you an opportunity to surrender your heart, to surrender your life to Him. Yeah. That it will be real. Swam, swam, if the country the Bodak the Wig, Josh, Kabe, Oicho. But swam, Josh. That. That's why we're here tonight, to encourage you, to remind you. And then it goes on to say in the scripture that we are to pray 
And that God will hear us. He will hear us. He will hear you. Atongkag, John. Atumadyo, in a, in a, Francine, in a, look at that, baby, a Joe, that she come to know, accept the Lord in her life. Come to receive God in her life. And that's why we're here today. Now, you know what? I don't know one thing led to another. Like I was telling you, our plan is we're going to come this way. We're going to hold the prayer services. We're going to probably make our, uh, what do you call that, uh, procession right through the street here. You guys don't have a lot of streets here. Just one main street here. And and we're going to we're gonna praise God. We're going to lift up the Lord. Amen. We're going to lift up His name because He's the only one that brings healing to our land. He's Amen. the only one that brings healing to us. And we're, that's the one we're looking to. Amen. That's the, He's the one that we're looking to. The same way that He promised these people, I'm going to bring some. I'm going to bring it together in the end. So trust me and pray to me. And it says that I'm going to hearken unto you. Hearken Amen. means hearken means to really pay attention with interest. That's what it means. When somebody hearkens, that means. That person is interested in what you're saying. Undivided attention. God says, I will do that when you pray to me. He said, pray with all of your heart. Pray and believe. Because the promises, you know my promises. You know my thoughts towards you. Never mind about what people say about you. Never mind about what you are labeled. I know there's a lot of us that are labeled all kinds of things. There's a lot of us, a lot of people that don't believe because they look at the person. And God says, you believe me what I say about you. Man. You believe that my thoughts is good towards you. You might be saying, sitting here somewhere and saying, nobody cares about me. That may be true. But God cares about you. Yeah. And He has something in mind for your life. Yeah. And it's not about the alcohol. It's not about the drugs. It's not about all that we do. But God has something in mind, something good for you. And He wants to bring you to Himself. And that is a good news. That's good news message today in our time. And I want to encourage you to look up, to rise up, and believe. Because He has good thoughts towards you. Amen. He has good thoughts towards you. Believe. Pray. Pray with all your heart because of that. And God will come and do His work in your life. Amen. That's the thing that I have on my heart this evening. And so we're gathered here today. We're going to dedicate this house to the Lord. This house. Where's Francine at? If she, while she's coming, I just want to say, to say to her, or we want to say to Francine, you know, the Bible tells us, it instructs us that, uh, I think that Jesus was telling the story and he was saying this, that a man had devils in him or demons. And the Lord cleaned it, took it all out, just like what he did to you. What were the demons? You know what? You know where demons work at? Demons work in our mind. Amen. That, that's where they work. Causes us to be to fall into addictions, and it is the mind causes us to think this way and to think that way. Even even just what I'm saying. A lot of times we don't think God loves us because our mind is our mind is filled with that those demonic influences telling you, no, that's not true. No, that's not right. No, don't do that. But the Lord said, I cleaned up this man, took all that out and cleaned him up. And then the demon left. The, the demon left. 
And he went to and fro a Begog, a kid find, looking for another house. And Francine, when the Lord cleaned you up, your house was all clean. I don't mean the natural house, not, not this house. But in your, in your life, it's all cleaned up. And so, but Jesus says the demon goes and he finds another demon. Seven, seven other ones. And they all come back to the clean house. And they saw that the house was empty and clean. And so they came back in. And it says that that person was seven times more worse than he was the first time. What is the teaching? The teaching is we've got to fill our house with the word of God. Amen. You've got to fill your house with the word of God. That's what the lesson is for us today. When we dedicate this house, I mean the Lord cleaned her up. The Lord forgave her. The Lord welcomed her and brought her to himself. And it's probably all clean. Francine all on fire. Yeah, Lord, you know, yeah. I could see the excitement in her when she was talking to us. We we're telling about what we're doing. She was, yeah. And it's all clean. Now she's got to fill it with God's word. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. Let that be a reminder as we dedicate this house. Don't leave it empty. Don't, don't, don't walk away from the word of God. Stay to it. Learn, grow. So when those demons come back, they can't come in because your house is full. Amen. Your house is, you have, you have Jesus in there, the word. Amen. You, Lord. Father, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for your encouragement that you encourage us. And this whole neighborhood, Lord. Lord, we bring everyone, every elder. Every elder, Lord, be with them. Instruct them, remind them, God. That you are there with them. Lift them up. Encourage them. In Jesus name we ask. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. So what we're going to do. If you would help me. Is we're going we're gonna to lay hands on this house. On this wall right here. Right here. And. Being as it. We have your permission to do that right. Yes. Sister. Yes. Francine. Yes. She wants to dedicate this house to God. Yes. And she's saying, she's making a statement tonight saying, this is the house of God. So that way we can come and have Bible study anytime we want to. <laughs> Amen. 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 So this belongs to the Lord. And, and she's putting notice to every demonic spirit out there that this belongs to God. Amen. Beginning with her. Because see, we can't do it. She has to do it first in her life. Amen. She has to surrender to God first. Then she can do this. Amen. 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 So we're going to do that at this time. If you would help me, come let's uh, lay hands on this house. And then, then we'll be done after that. Amen. And those of you that are listening and watching, um, we want to ask you to help us. Help us to pray. Help us to dedicate this house. And pray for Francine. Pray for her family, all the kids that are here, whoever's living here, that, that, that the Lord will speak to their hearts, that the Lord will intervene in this house. And I believe that it, and when he does that in here, here, it's going to overflow. It's going to go to that house and that house and that house and all throughout this neighborhood. Amen. That this will be a place. I just believe that God has set it up this way all along. Before, never did I thought, passing through here, never did I thought that I will be, we will be standing right here. That we will be doing a service right here. That, that a young woman will be surrendering their li her life to God. Never did I thought that it will be like this. But I believe God is preparing this place. He's preparing this place. And those of you that believe, we need to step up. Those of us that believe and trust in God like that, we need to step up. There's work to be done here. There's work to be done here. And it took this young lady that has a heart for God to open that door. Oh, thank you, God. I believe it was God that opened that door. 
Amen. I don't know where she met God. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. Amen. And the door has been opened. It reminds you of that uh, Noah's Ark when it said nobody could open or shut the door. Only God himself Amen. was to open and shut that door. Nobody, Noah couldn't even, he made it, he built it, but he couldn't even close the door. It was only God. Only God opens doors. And we just walk in. We don't claim anything. We don't say, oh, I did it. Oh, we did it. We didn't do nothing. It was God that did it. Open the door. Thank you, God. And we're going to do that. Help us. We're going to dedicate it to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Pick a spot. Pick a spot. Remember, the most important thing is that Sister Francine has given her life to God, to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're gonna pray pray with her also as well. Thank you. Lord. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Our Father, who art heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Find us the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we bring this home before you, God. Yes. You know everything about this place, about this home, God. We know you know what needs to be done. Yes. But we now stand with our sister, Lord, to present to you, to give to you, to dedicate to you, to tell you, God, to let you know, Lord, this is your house. That you will have your way. That your will will be done in this house. Not the enemy. Not all the evil forces that tries to come and have come to reside in this home. But God now, as our sister has been saved and given her life to you, dedicated her life to you, surrendered to you, God. Now, God, that you have given her authority to bring this home, and we stand with her, God, to dedicate this home to you, Lord. That all these influences are on notice as of right now. That they are vacated. They no longer are welcome here. They no longer are expected to be here. They no longer have any power in this home. Thank you, God. Bless it. Bless it, Lord. Let your spirit, Lord, be known. That the spirit, your spirit will lead them. Will lead her to the truth. Not the lies, but the truth. Thank you, Lord. We dedicate this home to you, Lord. Let there be healing here. Let there be laughter here. Let there be joy, God, here. Any word that speaks against it, Lord, let it not penetrate. And even as beginning with Francine, Lord, she is the watchman. She is the one that watches. Not no, None of those things will come in here, even by her own lips. But she will begin to speak life. She will begin to live the life that you called her to live, God. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I'm going to ask some of the ladies, would you come and pray with her, please? Please pray with uh, Sister Francine. Thank you, Lord. Francine, if you'll just stand over here. You can stand right there.
turned 92, so we ended up going up there and staying there, and I cried so hard I didn't want to leave him. Mm -hmm. I kept saying, I don't want to leave you on the cell. He goes, me, and you come back. You come back. You're always welcome here. Baby, you come back. And, and it was so hard because I thought of my dad. Thought about a thing, I didn't even ask Sophie or Joey to go. I just thought of Francine right away and we talked. Coming home, she cried a lot. She cried a lot. And, you know, and I told her to go ahead and cry. I said, a long time ago, I said, I heard John Jacob speak and he talked about crying and crying and it's good for you. And it, there's a lot of acid in there, so it releases all of that. Amen. And I told her, you know, there's nobody else to answer to but God. And you can walk, you know, nobody walks that straight and narrow road because they always fall. Amen. I said, but you got to let the past go. Amen. Let the past go and don't bring it up because that's where the problems all start. You know, and just keep walking straight, keep going, you know, no matter what, you know, people are going to say things, people are going to do this, but... You know what? There's nobody to answer to but God. I keep telling her. Yes. Nah. And we talked, and we talked all the way home, and you know, and I'm so glad that I asked her to go with me. To go with me, and we really enjoyed. And you know, the hardest part was leaving Uncle Sal because he thought of my dad, and you know, and they, you know, my dad received the Purple Heart and the Silver Star, and then. When we got there to California, Uncle Sal pulled out this little medal Hi. saying that um, my dad should have had five of those medals and he had four because my dad jumped more in the Korean War. He jumped more, you know, he did more jumps than Uncle Sal, but he said that my dad also liked him getting in the um, army. He was not even 18 yet. and. You know, a lot of history there with my dad, and I was telling him, you got to write all of this down, and, you know, and I'm, I'm so glad that, you know, there was a lot of things me and her had talked about yeah. that we're going to keep to ourselves, and that's going to help her. Yes. You know, the Lord's always there. He's a forgiving God. You know, when you fall off that straight and narrow road, you get back up, dust yeah. yourself off, and keep going, because that's mm -hmm. the only thing that's going to help you. You know, I'm so glad that my grandkids are here, my great grandkids are here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, you know, and I'm so thankful that Sheena and um why does it not work so are here because you know, they represent, you know, you know, and I pray for our boys that are locked up and far away and you know, and it's hard to think about them every day and Pray for them every day and pray for Courtney and Buddha, Pima, Gibby, Shaby and Sandan and Bradley. You know what? Things are going to get better now. Nah. I feel it in my heart that they're going to get better. Yes. You know, and I'm so thankful for my aunt, Kareem. She's 86 now. And pray for Joker. He's almost, he's 82. He'll be 83. And July and he always says on his cake to put 74. <laughs> so, you know, he is stubborn as ever. Stubborn as ever. And just, oh, he comes over and I said, Dad, hey, you don't have to pass. Oh, if I get it, I get it. If I die, I die. If I don't, I don't. I'm fat. Hey, Dad. <laughs> so, you know, and I, I hung around with Blair. <laughs> I hung around with Blair and Mikey and Virgil and Georgie Torch again. Cricket and you know, I think about when they, when they got up here and they talked. You know, Blair and I was like, Blair here. <laughs> so I'm so thankful to you that he gave himself to the Lord. You know, Man. because it's hard. It's hard to be what we were when we were young and we're judged, and I tell my granddaughter, you know, don't ever lie or do anything wrong because 20 years from now, you know, you do something bad, you know, they're not going to respect you for what you're doing and what's good and being done. They're always going to say, oh, that's the girl that did this long time yeah. ago, you know, and it's always going to be there, but that's the devil. That's just yeah. the devil yeah. and people, and we're going to rebuke that. We're going to rebuke that. And, yeah. You know, and it's hard, it's hard, and I just pray for Joey and Sylvia that aren't here, and um, 
My granddaughter always gets this book. I don't know how she got it from the church, but it's <laughs> out. So, and then she was on the phone with her dad telling her that she misses church and she misses helping sister in the kitchen. You know what? I'm glad because that's how I was raised by my grandparents. I was raised from Lucy and Tom Jackson and then, you know, Phil and Ed Shireen. I rode around with them. We'd stay at camp meeting all day. <laughs> Elliot would just be dirty when we come home, but he'll be asleep. And, you know, and my son, he's he's learning too, and he gave himself to the Lord. You know, and he said, Mom, you know, it doesn't matter what church we go to. He said, it's always one God, you know, so it doesn't matter what church we are. Yeah. I said, yeah, I really hope there. And you know what? I pay for my daughter, Sammy. And these are her two girls here, Abby and Peyton. And oh. Peyton, oh, Peyton's the white one. Just pray for her. <laughs> and so she always goes across the road on Saturdays and Tuesdays to write the sheep. And I'm like, Peyton, you don't even ask. I wore a vest. Those cowboys said, get back on, Peyton. So I get back on. And so just give us strength, you know, yeah. for me to keep teaching them what I could teach them and what I know and what my grandparents taught and my mom. And we're going to sing this song that my mom sang when she was passing away in the hospice at her home. And just, it was like Grandma Mashi with her. She was one of them. So then um, she always sang the song and she was just laying there and I would come at night and take care of her and Joey would do the day. And, and she would sing this song, and it was just so, you know, just to hear her, and, and you know, I'm, I'm glad my mom and Phil and Corrine and Sunny and Prue, they all sang, they were raised in the church. Yeah. And that's how I was raised with my grandparents. And, you know, Lucy and Tom would sit out and watch the sunset and talk about things about the Bible. And back then, I... It mean nothing to me, but now that I'm getting older, I'm like, oh, that's what they meant. That's what they were trying to tell me, you know. And then, you know, my sister Valerie so always said, write things down what they told you. Because my grandpa was born on April 10th, 1901. And so there was a lot of things that he had in history that he taught me. But I just wish he would have taught me how to speak the language. They would talk to me to it, but they wouldn't tell me to learn it, to talk to it. So if there was an old person, you know, that would talk to me, I would like, oh, okay, okay, I know what they're saying. But then, like, slang changes, and, you know, and I'm just so happy for Cena. It's hard. It's hard for her to be a young mother with all these responsibilities. But I told her, you know, give your kids to the Lord. Man. You know, you did your raising. They're all of age. Give yourself to the Lord, and they're going to, you know, He's going to guide them. He's going to guide them. Amen. And, you know, and it's going to lift a lot off your shoulders to give your kids to the Lord. And it's hard to give your kids to the Lord because you want to still step in and say, no, but you're not doing this, you're doing this, you know. But leave everything in God's hand. He's going to help you. Amen. He's going to help you. So we're going to go ahead and sing this song. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I was once lost, but now I am found.
and, yeah. and I told him, yeah. I told Waylon and um, Tweety or Sianna earlier when they stopped by, I said, I know I read somewhere in the Bible you shouldn't be so boastful, but I'm so happy and so yeah. excited and I'm yeah. gonna be boastful. <laughs>